this tree is dead. I'm afraid that if it, uh, we just cut it down, it would go towards that electric pole because that's how it's leaning. So we have a pole rope. Nice Milwaukee electric chainsaw. Perfect for this application. Here it comes. Oh. Almost, there it goes. Perfect. Ah, the boys are here. Grayson brought his chainsaw to help grandpa. You gotta help pick up these sticks, boys. Roll the log. Oh, we gotta roll it. Roll it, put your foot up. Hey, Whoa. The Well, that didn't take long. Good afternoon. Uh, I came over to our soybean field to check it. It is a Sunday afternoon here. Um, I was really, really counting on finishing this field of soybeans that we're in where we got rained out over a week ago now, Saturday. Uh, but it rained this morning. We had not much, half a tenth, but enough to make it probably not dry. The ground is wet. Is it dry enough that we could get across it? Yeah. Yeah, probably. But I'm curious if the beans are dry or not. I mean, it doesn't seem horrible. The question is, do the pods crack? Uh, it's not great, but it's not terrible. Okay. Ah! They're probably 16 or 17 percent. I could probably combine them. I really want to get this done. That pod cracked. It's uh, about 4 o'clock now. Maybe if I wait until 6, it'll be better. We do have sun and wind today. That helps beans dry out. They're definitely not 13% and crunchy, but... They're not 20% and mushy either, so. Yeah, we're probably gonna come back over here in about two hours and check this again. I've made it over to the farm. Um, I've got a little bit of time to kill before we can check on those beans again. We'll go drive around in the gator here in a little bit and check some of the stuff around here, but I'm gonna go mow the lawn in my seed warehouse. That needs done really badly. So, good thing to do here this afternoon. Well, I got my lawn mowed. Uh, Brock, if you want to come make hay this week, it might dry out enough. It was, it was pretty bad. Uh, there's a bean field right here. It's my plot, but we're going to go check these beans out here, see if they're any drier than the ones we looked at like an hour and a half ago. The ground is not dry, but I think we could get across it. We're going to make a heck of a mess no matter what we do. The question right now is just on the beans. They're not perfect cracking, but they do, I can get the beans out of those pods. They'll, they'll break apart. But how dry are the beans? Oh, guess I got one. That one actually cracked. Whoa. Those are 15% or drier. I could go do it. I could totally go do it. We're gonna drive around a little bit more, look at some stuff. We might run 40 acres of beans tonight just to be done. See, here's the issue. The field where we were at earlier, where the combine and the grain cart sits, is 10 miles from here. It is 10 miles that way. And we're kinda stuck there until we get those done. If I could finish those, even if the beans are a little wet or we track it up and make a mess out of things, we can get done and we can move back here so we're closer and we can shell corn if we need to. We can work on the drier fields. We've got a field to the north, the field that we irrigated corn in last year, that's beans right now. 
and it's got some sand on it. It's a little bit drier where we might be able to get across it easier. Um, but we, we don't want to pull out and then have to move back. And so I just want to get those 40 acres done and move on. Well, I thought I'd come to check on the wheat back here. We got a flock of turkeys. Uh, it's still a little wet. Most of this wheat came up pretty good, though. This is the stuff that I planted. Uh, it's been in the ground for a while now. I don't even know, two or three weeks. Uh, this was before we got the first big shot of rain. Uh, the stuff that we planted a little bit too thin, but it looks pretty good. It's there. I'm pretty happy with that. So that looks good. Uh, the north side of this field is where my March planted beans were, and you can see the wheat is much thinner, but it was later planted there. So I'm going to walk here a little bit because I don't want to drive a gator out there and we'll take a little closer look. Well, right here it looks pretty good. It's definitely a little thin because our seeding rate was off. Um, but it'll be fine. This was early planted wheat. Wheat will what we call tiller, where each individual plant will put off multiple shoots and um, kind of fill in the rows. So that's good. One thing I am noticing here, I got on the last video, I kind of showed you a neighbor or a, a, a somebody else's field that had a lot of volunteer corn in it. We got a lot of volunteer beans out here. A lot, a lot, if you look around. Um, but again, same as that situation. Um, a couple of seeds per square foot is not really the end of the world and these rows are 10 inch on uh, 10 inch spacing let me zoom out so if they're a 10 inch spacing basically a little over two inches beyond this row uh, by the same distance as a square foot and I'd have to look up the chart to see how many seeds per square foot equals one bushel loss but I mean like there's two there and then you've got big areas that don't have any and then like here there's a few uh so i don't think that it amounted to a lot i don't like to see it but it's not the end of the world um one thing to note is we are seeing it more so now and they're growing because it was so warm and it has been so warm and we've had so much rain since we combined this now here there's a lot why is there so much right here look at that that is no good uh, but it's been warm and wet, and it's made those uh, beans that were laying on the ground that either went through the combine or was header loss or whatever the issue was, they're all growing because the conditions are so good. They'll die off in the frost. They aren't going to cause any issues out here. You can see the thin spots in the wheat, though, that might cause some issues. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's why we've got volunteer beans, and I'm sure we've got volunteer corn in the cornfields. We could walk over there and look a little bit. Um, you try and minimize your harvest losses with the combine, but there's only so much you can do, and a little bit of loss looks really bad in the field. The question out here becomes, how is this wheat going to be? And is it worth keeping? Do we try and replant it? Are we going to have a chance to replant it? What do we do? You know, you can see, I can't see on my phone very good, but I can see pointing at it. Um, there's a pretty thin spot there, and then it's not so bad, and then it's thin again, and it's kind of wavy. I would assume, I'd have to look at a tile line map, but I'll assume those are tile lines where the wheat is growing good, and in between them, you're not seeing them. How much of this stuff where it's not very thick is going to fill in, I don't know. It might. It might not be terrible by the time we get it a few more days to grow. Um... But it doesn't look real good right now. So I just decided to pull into these endros on this corn. Man, it is soft out here, muddy. I just oh, sink right in. Not good. Uh, but I don't see any volunteer corn here, and uh, that's good. That means our combine's doing a good job in the corn. We're not throwing much over. So, oh, I would love to come and get this corn. It, it doesn't feel so bad out here. <sighs> yeah, all right. Well, we got a lot of good corn standing here, but we need to get it harvested. Well, these beans are clearly not ready to combine, but I thought we'd come take a look. These are my double crops, some of them. Uh, they're a 3.1 maturity. They were planted on July 4th. Yeah, I planted these on the 4th of July. Um, they look really good. You can see they're definitely turning yellow. The leaves are starting to drop off of them. They're not very tall. We don't have a ton of height here. They're 
not even up to my knee, but um, there's pods here. There's quite a few pods here. And uh, they should have pretty decent size of bean. So the seed size should be good because we've had so much rain the last few weeks here that um, that's why you fill out beans. Usually we talk about August rain being how you make beans and uh, with double crops that's September, early October rain. So they look really good. I'm excited to get in these. We're probably two to three weeks away from being able to harvest them. Realistically, it's going to be November before we're out here, but uh, yeah, that's exciting. Here's another field that we kind of did half of and then pulled out of it. And uh, that was the day we went to go do my corn plot. It's muddy. There's water on these ends. It's wet. Fortunately, on this one, we can park trucks on the road, work off the road a little bit, so we don't have to worry about getting them in and out of the field. But, man, we are going to mud stuff up and tear, tear up some fields trying to get the rest of these crops out. And it's not going to be pretty. Uh, here's another field. This is not a wheat field. This is one of our cover crop fields that uh, we planted here, I don't know, middle of September, three, four weeks ago now. And it looks fantastic. So this is oats and radish blend. And you can see our little radishes here. I doubt we got much of a tuber yet. Yeah, no. But these will form a big tuber, big tap root that goes way down deep in the ground. Uh, the radish has a nice fibrous root system, if you could pull one up that uh, um, they'll, they'll keep the soil from washing. They will uh, scavenge some nutrients. We had chicken litter spread on this field. So the oats and the radishes both will find the nitrogen and some of the nutrients that are in that um, chicken litter. They will use it, turn it into an organic form more or less. Well, it's already an organic form when it's uh, chicken litter, but, uh, um, and then as they they will winter kill so when they get frosted hard they will die off and then the the uh, oats and radishes will begin to decompose as they break down over the course of the spring and next summer they release that nitrogen back so the corn crop that we're going to plant in here will be able to use it and feed on it if we didn't do that and we just spread the chicken litter and left this as bare soil um the nitrogen would leach through the soil or would denitrify it would it would move with the water there wouldn't be any of it left in the spring for our corn crop so uh, this is a great way to kind of save that nitrogen and carry it over to next year's corn crop but cover crops look great i'm really happy with that i do see over there we've got a little bit of water um, and there's some spots here where it's the cover's a little bit thin but not too bad dad did some dirt work over here uh, i'm sure that things are much better than it would have been otherwise so this is the first field of corn that we harvested way back in September 12, almost a month ago. And you can see we've got some of that volunteer corn here. And it's yeah, it's relatively big. It's not horrible, but it's here. Uh, but that just shows you, there goes a grain truck. That just shows you how much um, uh, the adjustments and things and settings on the combine matter. This was where I started. It literally was the first, second pass, first round right off the road here. And I hadn't had time to adjust the combine and make sure that it was not doing that on corn out the back. So, um, you know, that other field that we looked at where there was nothing like this, uh, if the corn was there, it would be growing by now. So, that's, I mean, this isn't good to see, but it's good to see in the later planted fields that it is improved. All right, well, that's enough of our crop tour for the day. Um... I'm gonna hold off. I really wanna go finish those beans, but it's not supposed to rain tonight. It wasn't really supposed to rain last night either, but it did. Um, so I think we'll get them tomorrow. I was hoping that if I did them tonight, we could move in the morning and combine somewhere else tomorrow. But the ground conditions are just so muddy yet that I, I don't, I think it'd be better to wait until tomorrow to go and, and finish those. There is supposed to be rain tomorrow night. Uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning. So we're going to do it tomorrow. And then we'll probably end up in corn. But we'll see. You guys see those birds? I don't know if you can see them or not. There's a couple of really big birds out there. They're here every time I come down this way for like the last three, four days. I'm not sure if they're sandhill cranes or not. They're pretty big. I don't know if they're legal to shoot or not, but they'd be pretty easy ones to get. So anyway, um... Thanks for watching. We checked some fields. We learned it's muddy. Um, 
Okay, I promise you we will be back in the fields this week, likely tomorrow. They're loud too. Um, likely tomorrow, and I've got something exciting for you guys. Uh, you caught the end of the last video there. You may have seen a sneak peek, but um, we've got some we got some equipment coming, and I don't know if we're gonna get it this week. I don't know when exactly or what the details are just yet. Uh, I'll fill you in when I get them, but uh, it's gonna be exciting. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great night Well now if that don't just make you rethink what I had just decided About waiting to go To the field that combine's got a corn reel on the head. They must have some down corn somewhere. They're fighting